Okay? Isang umaaribang uh, afternoon sa lahat or good afternoon everyone. Thank you for for those who are present here for finding time and attending today's webinar. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, today's webinar uh, objective is to educate the participants about their rights in time of COVID-19 pandemic. While we are in the most uh, difficult times, uh, we cannot uh, let this pandemic stop us from having this kind of webinar and educational learning that the Community Extension De Development Department and Commission of Human Rights have prepared for us. To formally start the program, let us ask God, the Almighty Father, to bless us as we gather on this particular endeavor. This will be followed by the singing of the Philippine National Anthem and, Nas and Alma Mater hymn. Dearest God, our loving Lord, to you we direct our praise and prayer as creator of the world, as giver of life. 400 years ago, upon Las Islas de Filipinas, our beloved country, it pleased you to establish Colegio de San Juan de Letran as haven for the poor, as seedbed of saints, as cradle of heroes, a school dedicated to the teaching of truth and the learning of life. On this, our jubilee, bind us to our oath as your knights, without fear in the face of enemies, brave and upright in the love of God. Always truthful, even unto death, defenders of the helpless, doers of good. May the blessings bestowed upon us lead us to serve your people and return to you in thanks eternal. Through the pleas of Mary, in the name of Jesus, Arriba, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good afternoon, Paul.
través de su augusto destino, de esperanza será su rociclé, pues lograste según tu modelo tantos hombres ilustres formar, que es el Once again, uh, good afternoon. Um, I would like to ask permission to all the participants to allow us to record this particular webinar for proper documentation purposes only. Today, uh, we are virtually gathered here to be educated or deepen our understanding about human rights, specifically uh, child rights. To the participants, grade school students, uh, junior high school students, uh, to the resource speaker, uh, the, the organizer, the CHR representatives, uh, welcome to our webinar entitled Child Rights in COVID-19 Pandemic. It is my privilege actually and pleasure you know, on behalf of the Colegio to welcome you here today. We are delighted to all of you with us, you know, with us to participate and share in this educational activity. And uh, I'm sincerely thanking all of the participants who are present today. Prepare yourself to be, to be challenged, uh, excited and inspired. I want to say once, once more on behalf of the Colegio, welcome. It's wonderful to see many of you virtually. Uh, we are we are using the Zoom and we are live through the CED FP page uh, live streaming. Okay, without further ado from this point, allow me to call um, Ma'am uh, Miss Grace Berdadati, the community organizer of the community extension uh, department of the Colegio to introduce our resource speaker for today. Our resource speaker for today was a former accountant and administrative officer of Great Obelisk Builders Incorporated. She has been serving the Commission on Human Rights since March 2013 up to the present. Currently, she is the Division Chief as Development Management Officer under the Child's Rights Center of the Commission on Human Rights. So without further ado, let's welcome Attorney Julie Ann Baluyot Regalado. Good afternoon. Hello. Thank you, Ma'am Grace. And thank you, Ma'am Sir Leo. Um, maayos na bang sound ko? Okay naman siya. Okay. May, may I get a thumbs up if naririg ako ng mga participants this afternoon? Hello? For a while, ha? Let me see. Ayan. Thank you. Ayan. Very active participant. Salamat for the thumbs up. Ayan. So good afternoon again from the Commission on Human Rights. Gusto na yung magsasalamat sa Letran, Aliba Letran, for inviting the Commission on Human Rights sa inyong um, session this afternoon. So as what we have earlier um, shared, uh, what earlier shared by Sir Leo, ang ating pong topic for this afternoon is children's rights. And particularly children's rights, during COVID-19 pandemic. So I hope makakuha tayo ng information about your rights and of course your responsibilities 
and how the COVID-19 pandemic impacted this, right? And what we can do, of course, diba, para for us to enjoy and exercise this right, especially uh, during this, this um, time of pandemic. Ayan. So allow me to uh, share my uh, presentation for a while. Let me share it muna para um, makita nyo. And then just to um, 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 just to um, inform you ahead of time that the presentation, dalawa siya. The first part will be on the rights of children in general. And of course, we did discuss ko rin yung mga rights na affect to handle sa COVID-19 pandemic. And later on, after a short break probably, I will be sharing with you naman yung impact ng um, COVID pandemic uh, sa karapatan ng mga bata. Ayan. Sige. Ah, sorry. Medyo naghang ang aking. Ayan. I hope nakikita niyo yung presentation. I'll just check for a while. Ayan. Sige. I, um, lakihan ko lang para makita niyo yung lahat. For a while. There. Sige. Again, um, kita niyo ba? Thumbs up again if you can see the presentation. If it's clear sa side niyo. Yan. Thank you so much. Yan. Salamat sa mga nagtatumps. I'm sorry, I'm not able to see your faces, but I understand that we have uh, representatives from different um, classes, you know, from sa grade school uh, and high school. So, uh, good, uh, good afternoon sa lahat. And I'm excited to be with you this afternoon. If you have any questions sa presentation ko, please feel free to chat. Uh, ilagay niya sa, to send a message sa ating using our chat box. And if there are anything that is bothering you sa ating presentation na gusto nyo itanong, of course, we are free um, to unmute yourselves and um, ask anytime. Ayan. So, kung meron kayong gustong tanongin, go ahead. You are free to discuss. Ayan. But before anything else, before I start, before I begin, I would like to ask muna siguro, um, and you may respond then by giving me a thumbs up. How many are you, oh may, how many of you are able to attend yung gantong session on children's rights. Meron na ba kayong na-attendan nito or is this your first time? For those who are able to attend, can you please, again, give me a thumbs up just to, para mamaga-idea ako. Anyone na meron na? Or baka lahat kayo ay may na-attendan ng gantong lecture on children's rights. Anyone? Wala akong nakikita ng thumbs up. Or I guess one. I see one, two. So very few, no? Ayan. Sige, I hope makatulong siya this afternoon, but I'm sure naman na a lot of you are already familiar with these rights. Kailangan lang natin sigurong paitingin ang inyong kaalaman. And kanina with your pre-test, baka nahirapan kayo, but um, medyo ano kasi siya, medyo um, may pagka um, technical when it comes to the convention mismo. But hopefully with our discussion this afternoon, masagot yung ibang questions tungkol doon. So let me begin, ayan. So your outline and presentation ko again is we will be focusing on the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child or yung UNCRC. I will be discussing yung guiding principles, yung ano yung iba't ibang rights ng children, and then how the, how is this convention being enforced dito sa country? Paano ba natin uh, paano ba natin implement to? And how are we children enjoying these rights? And then on the latter part, yung second part ng ating presentation. Ito na yung particular na tayo, yung your rights on the impact of COVID-19 doon sa ating karapatan ng ating mga kabataan. So, two parts na siya. Ayan, simula natin. So, when you talk of Convention on the Rights of the Child, medyo ano siya, no? very technical. It can be intimidating. But just to say that when you talk of convention, simple lang naman ang convention. It means agreement or yung kasunduan between two parties or a contract. Only in this case, maraming iba't ibang country ang nagkasundo sa isang convention, sa isang um, dokumento, at nangako sila na susundin yung laman na ito. So, hindi lang siya contract between two parties, but contract siya among different states or countries sa buong mundo. And that's what, that's that's called convention. It could also be, some would call it um, um, agreement, yung iba naman, um, ang tinatawag, eh, sorry, 
Ayan. So, agreement siya or treaty, ginagamit din siyang term na yon. But for the UNCRC, doon sa unang question kanina, the UNCRC, the UNCRC stands for the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. So, yun yung meaning ng UNCRC. So, from this point, um, when I refer to UNCRC, it means to the, I'm referring to the convention or yung agreement na pag-uusapan natin um, this afternoon. So, United Nations, because um, we are referring to different nations who are part of this um, global assembly of nations. Yun. So, as of the moment, I think ang latest, I think, no, ang latest update, there are 193 countries who are um, part of the United Nations. And sila din, yung iba, some of them, or at least most of them, are already a party to this convention. Or sila ay um, naging parte na ng convention ito. So yung UNCRC, o yung Convention on the Rights of the Child, matagal na to 1989 pa. I'm not sure if pinanganak na kayo that time. But at this point, bata pa rin ako. Bata pa ako noong 1989. So dun, dun siya nagkaroon, ng, dito inadapt ang UNCRC. And then, kung nababasa nyo, most ratified siya. Ibig sabihin, more than, I think, 196 parties or 196 countries uh, agreed na susundin nila tong convention na ito. Pag binasa nyo yung convention o yung dokumento mismo, may kita nyo dyan na wala naman siyang parusang binibigay sa pag-violate ng mga rights na ito. Pero, ini-encourage niya ang bawat state, ang bawat party na gawin yung kanilang kakaya, kakayanin, yung kanilang kakayanan upang um, uh, ma-enjoy ng kanilang mga kabataan ang karapatan nila sa kanilang um, mga bansa. So, importante yan um, na i-adapt nila at sundin yung laman ng convention. So, ang Pilipinas naman, of course, tayo ay siyempre pumirma rin tayo sa convention ito. A year after, um, noong August 21, 1990, I think this is also part of your pretest, um, August 21, 1990 or 1990, naging parte na ang Pilipinas ng convention na ito. Anong ibig sabihin pag tayo ay naging parte ng convention? Ibig sabihin ito, the government, the Philippines, will ensure that all children within, its, within the country will enjoy the rights that are provided under the convention. So, kung ano man ang karapatan na nakasulat sa convention, gagawin ng Pilipinas, gagawin ng gobyerno na ma-enjoy ito ng mga kapataan. Ayan. So, bukod sa doon sa convention na tinatawag o yung listahan ng mga karapatan ng mga bata, meron din itong mga optional protocol. Again, yung optional protocol, medyo intimidating, no? But ang ibig sabihin lang ng optional protocol ay yung mga karagdagang dokumento na, na, nag, um, na binibigay naman or nagda-discuss naman or nag-identify ng iba pang karapatan ng mga bata. Uh, in particular, meron ng tatlo. Yung isang optional protocol ay tungkol sa mga bata who are children in armed conflict. Ito yung mga bata um, um, na apektuhan ng um, kaguluhan sa kanilang mga lugar. Especially in our country, meron din tayo nito. Um, mas kilala siguro, uh, kumbaga, aware kayo na sa party ng Dintanao, meron tayo mga bata doon na tinatawag nating children um, in situations of armed conflict. Um, sila ay nakakaranas ng... Um, um, kaguluhan or kakaranas ng sitwasyon kung saan ay naapektuhan sila ng armed conflict sa kanilang lugar. And then we also have an op the optional protocol on the sale of children, child prostitution, and child pornography. So is isa naman tong karagdagang dokumento din doon sa convention na naglatag din naman ng iba't ibang karapatan ng bata pagdating sa prostitution, sa pornografiya, and then sa exploitation that has something to do sa kanilang kumbaga pag exploit sa kanila bilang bata. And then, meron din tayong optional protocol 3 o yung tinatawag na communication procedure. Ito naman yung um, pagkakataon o dinibigyan ng pagkakataon ang mga bata na makapag-report o lumapit sa, sa International Assembly o sa, sa venue kung saan sila ay makakapag-report. Sa kasulukuyan, ito ay hindi pa nilalagdaan ng Pilipinas. Hindi pa tayo parte nito. But hopefully, in the future, um, makasama tayo at... Um, uh, lagdaan na rin to ng Pilipinas para ang mga kabataan din ay magkaroon ng pagkakataong magamit ito at makapag-report din sa, um, sa UNCRC ng mga violation ng um, convention na tinatawag. Ayan. So para lang maintindihan natin, I'm sure, um, di ko alam kung pagkakaroon kayo ng ibang discussion ito, pero para lang maintindihan nyo, ano nga ba ang karapatan mo pag sinabi ikaw ay isang rights holder bilang bata? 
ikaw ay tinatawag na rights holder. Ano nga bang ibig sabihin nun? Bilang rights holder o yung isang taong nakakara- um, uh, may karapatan, ang ibig sabihin nito, tayo ay entitled sa ating karapatan. Yung mga karapatan na i-discuss natin later. Um, we also ha- have the right to claim these rights. Kung alam natin na karapatan natin ito, maari natin of course um, i- in- i- um, i-assert itong mga rights na to. Kaya importante na aware kayo kung ano itong mga to. And then, of course, if you know na yung duty bearer o yung halimbawa in your case, ang gobyerno, alam yung may karapatan kayo na hingin ito sa gobyerno o sa halimbawa, for example, sa inyong paaralan, syempre, pwede din natin silang hingin itong karapatan na ito at sabihin at, mag, at um, erase kung halimbawa ang tingin natin ay hindi natin na enjoy ang mga karapatan nito. Pero ang pinaka-importante sa mga ito, bilang ang uh, nai-enjoy natin ang ating karapatan, we also have to be responsible to, to the extent that we will not, in exercising our rights, hindi natin dapat maapektuhan ang rights ng ibang tao. So we also need to be responsible enough to ensure that we are also respect, respecting other people's rights. ba? Diba? Part naman ng rights always are responsibility. So very important na alam natin yun bilang mga bata. And then, of course, we have the duty bearers. When you say duty bearers, ito naman yung mga um, tao na may obligasyon na i- i- um, i- um, sundin at ibigay at ma-enjoy gawin ang kanilang kayanan upang ma-enjoy ng mga kabataan ang kanilang mga karapatan. So bilang mga duty bearers at kasama kami doon bilang mga nagkatrabaho sa gobyerno, kasama rin dito of course yung iba pa, hindi lang kami nasa gobyerno. Maaring kasama rin dito of course ang inyong mga teachers sa school, ang inyong mga parents. Kasi may mga karapatan din, may mga karapatan din kayo na kailangan din nilang respetuhin at um, ibigay. So bilang mga duty bearers or kami may mga obligasyon, um, kailangan namin respetuhin ang inyong karapatan bilang mga bata. At yung mga karapatan nga ito ay yung mga i-discuss natin later. Aside doon, kailangan din namin protektahan ang inyong karapatan. Uh, paano nga ito protektahan nito? We have to ensure that possible violations or any act that may violate your rights, kailangan na namin protektahan kayo at hindi kayo maapektuhan nun. Fulfillment, dapat magkaroon kami ng positive action, gumawa ng programa, gumawa ng mga batas upang ma-enjoy niyo yung mga karapatan ito. And lastly, we also have to take steps to promote these rights para alam niyo din bilang bata. And your school, yung Letran, together of course with the help of CHR, this is what we are doing this afternoon. We are trying um, to promote your rights by informing you kung ano yung karapatan ito para of course ma-exercise niyo rin ito. Siyempre, kailangan ma-empower din kayo for you to know your rights. Ayan. So, let's proceed. Bago tayo mag, siguro, bago tayo dumaretso pala, um, kailangan of course natin malamang, we, we are talking of the United Nations of Convention of, on the Rights of the Child. Very important for us to know, sino nga ba ang bata? I think this is one of the questions kanina. And siguro, no, I just would like to know, um, Medyo curious lang akong malaman kung ano ang naging um, sagot natin doon sa tanong na yun. Sabi doon sa questions na binigay, I think sa pre-test, no? children, uh, persons, not below the age of blank. Parang may ganun kami. Um, may I know kung ano yung siguro if you can chat or type sa chat box? Yan. Ang bilis naman yung siya. Yan. Yan. Persons not below the age of a lot of Students are saying under the age of 18. Very good. In fairness. Ayan. Below the age of 18. And this is very critical ha. Kasi pag 18 kayo, halimbawa, birthday nyo today, birthday nyo today, ano bang araw ngayon? Kung birthday nyo today, bata pa ba kayo or hindi na? Yes or no? Today ang birthday nyo. Ano bang araw today? Today, Tuesday is your birthday. For the 17 ba today o? Oh. Kung today ang birthday nyo at you turned 18 today, bata pa ba kayo? Kasi nga mag-chat tayo. Is that a yes or a no? Sorry, may mga nag-chat na paya. No, no. Very good. Ayan. This is very critical. Kasi kahit minsan that we adults nalilito eh. Um, very important point doon na persons below the age of 18. So for example, birthday nyo today, tama. You are no longer a child today. Ayan. So, yesterday, siguro around 11.59, bata ka pa. 
Pero pag tungtong ng alas 12, alas 12, ikaw ay adult na. And why is this very important? Marami kasi tayong laws na, na nagpo-protect sa karapatan ng mga bata. There are different processes which protects their children. Kasi nga, alam natin na bilang bata, um, they deserve special protection. Kaya very important for us to know kung bata pa tayo o hindi na. And thank, I, I'm happy to know that a lot of you are aware kung sino ang bata kasi very confusing ito for some. Ayan. So, when you look at the definition of children under the UNCRC, ang sinasabi dito, tama kayo, a child means every human being below the age of 18 years old. 18 years of age. Ayan. In some countries kasi, ang um, um, age of majority nila mas mataas or mas mabat ba. But in the Philippines and um, in our law, 18 din naman tayo. Although if you look at um, RA 7610, RA 7610, I think mas familiar kayo nito sa Child Abuse Act. Ito yung madalas na ginagamit kapag ka merong abut, uh, batang ina-abuso, di ba? Sabihin nila, sasambahan kita ng RA 7610. So ito yung Child Abuse Act. Same din ang definition. Sabi doon sa batas, a child is a person below 18 years of age, pero may exception siya. Pwede din kasi above 18 who are not able to take care of themselves because of physical and mental disability or condition. So some persons may be over 18, pero kung they have disability or uh, because of physical or either mental or physical disability, pwede silang bigyan ng special protection na para silang mga bata. Kasi kinukonsider doon na um, based on their physical condition or mental condition, kailangan pa rin nila ng special protection. So, ito yung exemption under our law, under 8761. Ayan. Yun. So, if there are any questions, type nyo lang sa chat box para mapag-usapan natin. Ipaposid ko lang. Ayan. So, it, isa to sa mga questions again in your pre-test. I think the question is, what are the four guiding principles under the UNCRC? Ayan. There are four actually guiding principles under the UNCRC. And when you say guiding principles, ito yung mga foundation ng convention. Ano nga ba yung naging basis kung bakit nagkaroon ng listahan ng mga karapatan ito? So, ito yon. Pasensya na at medyo malabo na. But um, just to discuss, una is yung number um, article, so may kita sa article 2 of the convention, nakalagay dyan yung rights of children to equal condition or in short, non-discrimination. And when you say non-discrimination, ibig sabihin, all the provisions, all the rights um, identified under the conventions applies to all children sa lahat ng bata, regardless of your, a, uh, regardless of your age, your um, gender, your um, physical um, condition, regardless of your economic status. Lahat yan mag apply sa atin, sa inyong mga bata. And dapat pantay-pantay yan. Hindi dapat magkakaroon ng discrimination ang application ng mga karapatang ito. And then, Isa pa sa guiding principles is the best interest of the child. I think this is one of the questions again in the pretest. Ano bang ibig sabihin when you say best interest of the child? Ang ibig sabihin lang niya is um, ang mga adults or if the government makes decision for children, our primary consideration, ay yung una namin titingnan dyan is the best interest of the child. So the question should always be, ano ba ang pinakamabuting gawin para sa bata? So, when, when we make decisions for children, kailangan tinatanong namin yan. And masagot siya, of course, lang positively. And then, of course, we we recognize children's right to life and development under the convention. Later on, makita nyo yan sa discussion natin. And lastly, the child, uh, of course, every children has the right to be heard or the right to participate. And this is very important because sometimes children, as children, people would look at you as uh, parang wala pang karapatang magsalita, di ba? But it's very important that, that in matters that affecting children, dapat marinig ang boses nyo. Your voice should be heard. But you have to, of course, consider na, of course, we will listen to your opinions, we will listen to your suggestions or your recommendation. But at the end of the day, when we make decisions na, we also have to balance things. And um, in, in hearing your voice, of course, it doesn't necessarily mean na you also have the right na i-assert ang gusto nyo, especially if we think na hindi makakabuti sa inyo yon. So again, voice siya, but not necessarily choice. The choice, of course, will have to will have to um, consider kung ano yung makabubuti para sa inyo. Ayan. So, 
just to continue, ayan, um, inisa-isa ko lang siya. Again, when you say best interest in all actions concerning children, whether undertaken by the public or private or kami or even your parents or your family, kailangan namin tinitingnan yung best interest nyo o yung pinakamabuti para sa inyo bilang mga bata. When you say non-discrimination, kailangan lahat ay ma-enjoy ang inyong karapatan respective regardless of your race, of your sex, of your language, or your religion. Lahat ito kailangan ma-enjoy. Lahat ng bata ay kailangan ma-enjoy ang karapatan nito equally. And then of course, right to life, survival, and development. Ay, may nag-request ng remote control of your skin. Um, somebody is asking... Requesting a remote control of my screen. Do I approve? Tabi ko muna siya. Decline ko muna. Ayan. So, right to life, survival, and development. Ito yung, of course, recognition that every child has the right to life. And, of course, dapat ma-develop din siya in, to his full potential. And then, yung sasabi ko nga kanina, yung right to participate or yung right to be heard, especially on matters that are affecting them. So, these are... It's okay, Isa. No problem. <laughs> It's okay. Ayan. So, these are the four driving principles ng ating UNCRC. Ito yung um, kanina, I think this is part of your playlist. So, let's go. I think ito mas, ano na to, mas um, less technical and I hope mas makarelate kayo dito. So, now we go to the discussion on the different categories of children's rights. But before I proceed, I would like to ask again, Children, um, gusto ko lang siguro makita, at least if you can chat, kung kaya naman, I would like to see sana kung ano yung alam yung mga karapatan niya bilang bata. Very general lang. What, an, um, what rights ang aware kayo? What rights do you have na tingin niyo aware kayo dito? And maybe you can chat para lang makita ko kung ano itong mga rights kayo na meron kayo and which you are aware of. Can... Um, Yan, meron naglagay right to education. Right to education lang ba ang meron ang mga bata right to life? Right to live? Oh, yes, very good. Others, meron pa ba? So, you have the right to education, you have the right to live, of course, very good. Meron pa bang ibang right? Yun lang ba? Kayo ba ay mag-aaral lang at mabubuhay? Right to development, of course. Right to play. I'm glad may nagsabing right to play. Oh, Siyempre, bilang mga bata, you have the right to play. Others, meron pa ba? Right to have a name, very good. Right to have a name, right to survival. So, ayan, I'm, I'm happy to see na we are aware of this, right? Pero siguro, right to basic needs. And when you say basic needs, that would include, of course, um, food, shelter, clothing, right to be happy, right to access what they need to have a good life. Yung mga yan, right to basic need, right to refuse. I'm, yeah, right to refuse. And that would also be included, of course, hindi ka pwedeng pilitin gawin yung mga bagay na ayaw mo. Right to have a family that would take care of you. Right to safety or protection. Very good. Ayan. Thank you very much. So, ito, ito yung iba't ibang rights. And um, tingnan natin kung anong iba pa. But basically, na-mention yun na halos lahat. But um, puntahan lang natin siya. There are four categories of children's rights. So, una, right to survival, right to development, number two, right to participation, and right to protection. So, when you say right to survival, ito yung right to life or yung basic needs na sinasabi nyo nga kanina, your right to basic needs. Yung right, yung right for you to have the things that you need to live a good life, kumbaga. At least yung basic, ha? Siyempre, dapat alam natin yung wants at saka yung needs. Of course, yung basic or yung needs natin, you have the right to have those things. So, what are the rights that are included of the rights to survival? So, kasama dyan yung right to life, right to unnamed and internationality. Na-mention yung kanina, yan, right to life, right to unnamed and internationality. Na-mention yung kanina, right to have, the right to be healthy. Sabi kanina, the right to have parents or the right to be taken care of by your parents. Karapatan nyo yan. And yung sabi niya, the right to basic needs, and that would include food, shelter, and clothing. So yan, karapatan niyo yan na dapat mat matamasan niyo bilang mga bata. Yan. Yung next naman na uh, category of rights is right to development. So when you say right to development, ito naman yung karapatan ng bata to improve on his skills, 
or talents to grow para ma-reach siya yung fullest potential niya. And how can you reach your fullest potential? Of course, kailangan makapag- magkaroon kayo ng access to education, makapag-aral, kaya katulad ng ginagawa nyo ngayon. Ano pa ba yung iba niyong karapatan under the right to development? Yan. Sabi nga natin, you have the right to education. Of course, you have the right to rest, magpahinga, and the right to play. Why not? Di ba? Bilang children, we need to play. Kasi we also, um, scientifically, di ba, play can be good for our health. Di ba? We need physical activities para mas maging healthy tayo. We need to be active, di ba? Kaya nga, as much as possible, hindi lang tayo pwedeng nakalupo sa bahay. We need to be able to to go out and play. Huwag naman sa labas kasi bawal din tayo lumabas. At least sa garden nyo or you have to be, have activities naman within your house where we can um, move around and play. And then bilang mga children with disabilities, we also have, yes, of course, even in your backyard, sabi nga ni Ziva, di ba? in your background, you can play. Di ba? Marami tayong activities. And then, Um, even children with disabilities, they also have the right to enjoy a full and decent life. Kahit sila ay merong um, ka- um, incapacity, incapacities, ayan. So, part yan sa mga kanilang ating, inyong, hindi pala ako kasama dahil hindi ako bata, inyong karapatan bilang bata. And then, right to participate. Right to participation is your right to express your views and opinions. Yung sabi ko kanina na you have the right to be heard. Um, you can make decisions, especially on matters that are affecting, that affects you. So, maganda sana in your school, sana meron kayong mga assembly like this, where you can be heard. Or if there are um, another also, another way then kung kailan nyo ito mapapractice is by, say for example, um, joining yung inyong mga school committees. Or if you run for, say for example, as a student council, Diba? Maganda rin opportunity where you can participate sa mga decisions sa, na, sa inyong schools. And here are some of the rights under the right to participate. Ito yung, you have the right to association and peaceful assembly. Ayan, um, peaceful dapat siya, of course. Huwag tayo nakikipag-away. It should be peaceful assembly. Of course, you have the right to freedom of expression. But, uh, of course, in exercising your right to freedom of expression, make sure naman na You're also expecting other people's rights. Um, let us not engage to bullying other other children, especially in social media. We also have to be responsible. And then you have the right to freedom of thought, content, conscience, and religion. You can practice your religion, di ba? Kung saan kayo tinuro at kung ano yung ano yung um kung ano yung itinapractice you today. Of course, you have the right to do that. No one can stop you from exercising these rights. And na rin, uh, nabasa ko rin kanina ito, yung access to information. Any information that may be useful to you, you can access. But you also have to be careful. Kasi may mga information na hindi din pang bata. Of course, we um we also have to um protect ourselves from this information. Nakalagay dyan, useful and wholesome information. Yun yung information na makakatulong sa atin. And then, Uh, very important, of course, the fourth category of right is right to protection. Of course, as children, we have to be protected and we have to be safeguarded against all forms, lahat ng klase ng violence, abuse, neglect, or exploitation. And that would include, of course, um, protection kapag merong calamities or disasters or conflict and war. Kaya nga kanina ina stress natin, di ba, yung mga children in situations of armed conflict, they also need to be protected. So, ano tong mga rights nito under the right to protection? Of course, you have the right to be protected from discrimination, regardless of your choice, regardless of your gender, regardless of your um, economic um, um, situation, kung ano ka man, you have to be protected from discrimination. And then, you also have the right to be um, protected from abduction or sale or from being exploited, di ba, as children. And then, of, na-mention ko kanina, you have to be protected from war. And then, you have to be protected from the use or drug abuse. Um, of course, even any forms of sexual abuse. And then, pati economic abuse. And when you say economic abuse as children, as much as possible, you should not engage sa mga child, child labor na tinatawag, which may be harmful to your health and which may hamper your right or your right to access education. Ayan. Of 
course, um, if you would like to help your family, kung especially now na nasa bahay kayo, of course, you can help your family. Baka naman sabihin niyo sa parents niyo na you cannot, uh, hindi kayo pwede maghugas ng pinggan because this is already a form of child abuse. Of course not. Di ba? There are family and there are things that we can do to help at home. And dito child labor, ha? So, of course, as long as we can help our family, let's do it, especially during this time kasi nasa bahay tayo. Hindi siya form ng child abuse. Of course, we have children then who are in conflict with the law. Meron tayong mga bata rin na naka, nakalabag ng batas and they need to be protected as well. And the protection should be provided, should be given, of course, by the government. We have our law enforcers. We have the police um, who can, whom we can ask for assistance, especially if we are experiencing abuse, neglect, or exploitation. Andiyan ang ating mga kapulisan. Ayun. So, um, ito naman, sorry, baka magulang kayo. Ito naman ang... Ang slide na to, it's just more of asking, baka lang kasi iniisip nyo, ngayong merong convention at ngayong nakalist na lahat ng karapatan ko, paano ko naman siya mai-enjoy bilang bata? What does the government do para ma-enforce itong mga protection na to under UNCRC? Um, you need not read kasi baka makonsist kayo, but basically, what the government does is it can come up with laws, mga batas which protects children, para ma-translate itong karapatan na ito sa batas at na-enjoy ng mga bata. Say, for example, protection of children in situations of armed conflict o yung mga lugar kung saan may kaguluhan or digmaan. Meron tayong batas na ngayon para dito. A law which protects children from being recruited ng mga armed groups. Meron to bagong batas lang. There are also laws, may mga batas na nagko-protect sa mga bata against um, pornography. Meron din tayong um, laws which protect children from Um, abuse or exploitation. So, marami tayong batas. And um, ito yung translation. Ito yung kung paano natin um, sinasa, ano, sinasa buhay itong mga karapatan na ito. Of course, we also um, ginagamit din natin itong mga karapatan na ito bilang standards on how we um, how we treat children, on how we manage them, on how we treat the concerns of children. And ito ay ginagamit din, of course, nagiging basis to ng iba't ibang government agencies or even organization and the way we handle children's concern. Kahit kami sa Commission on Human Rights, ito yung, at least for the Child Rights Center sa amin, ito yung nagiging basihan namin sa lahat ng ginagawa namin action or responses sa mga bata. And bilang nakasulat na to sa United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child at bilang nag-agree na tayo bilang bansa, um, of course, we have to do our best to abstain or para pigilan ang, or to prevent any action um, that may preclude you children from enjoying these rights. So nakatulong ang convention kasi we are constantly reminded of the standards that we have to follow para ma-enjoy nyo ang mga karapatang ito. So that's how uh, the government does it. So ito yung way kung paano, kung paano nyo na-enjoy ngayon ang inyong mga karapatan bilang bata. And lastly, I think this is my last slide. Ay, hindi pa pala. Second to my last slide. Um, very quickly lang, para lang may idea kayo. Yung nasa convention, lahat yung nakita nyo kanina, lista, yun yung mga karapatan na nasa convention. Um, meron din tayong way para, of course, um, ma-report kung ang Pilipinas or ang country natin ay ginagawa ba yung kanilang tungkulin na ma-enjoy ng mga bata yung karapatang ito. So, In our case, um, at least for um, for the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, may meron kasing regular reporting yan. So, every five years, nag-report yung mga country, ina-update nila yung, um, meron kasing committee ang UNCRC kung saan sila yung nagmamonitor ng, um, ng um, implementation ng convention. So, itong committee na to, binubuo to ng mga 18 children rights experts, mga eksperto on children's rights. And they are the ones assessing kung nagagawa ba ng isang country na um, yung kanilang responsibilidad under the convention. So, every year, every five years pala, um, nag-report ang country natin, ang Philippines, at least, at yun ang requirement, mag-report tayo doon sa committee kung ano na nagawa natin, ano na nagawa natin batas, programa, or mga polisiya para ma-enjoy ng mga bata yung kanilang karapatan under the UNCRC. And lately, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 2019, nag-submit 
nag-submit na ang report ang Philippines sa kanilang nagawa para may, may isa katuparan ang mga provision na ito. And um, kami din bilang sa CHR, nakapag-submit na rin kami kung ano naman ang aming pananaw at ano yung nakita namin at ano yung aming na-observe uh, sa pag implement ng mga karapatang ito. So maganda tong mekanismo or maganda tong paraan kung saan tayo ay napaparating natin sa ibang bansa yung ating um, pagsunod sa convention. At least naririnig dito yung mga boses ng kabataan kasi ang basis naman ng report na ito ay galing din sa mga bata. Like in our case in the commission, nagkaroon kami ng consultation with the children kung paano nila na-enjoy ang mga karapatan ito. At ito rin yung report namin sa UN Assembly. So yan. So last, and my last point, at least for this slide, is Oh, we also have to remember now when we exercise our rights, lagi yung may responsibility. When we exercise our rights, lagi siyang may katapat na responsibility. And that's very important. We cannot always assert our rights without, of course, being conscious na meron tong katapat na responsibility. Actually, this is, ano eh, para siyang matching type. Kaya lang, I'm not sure if you're able to annotate, but if you can, you can annotate actually para mang madugtong siya. Yan. I'm not sure if you're able to annotate, but um, this one, say for example, kung meron kayong karapatang makapaglaro at makapaglibang, what should be your responsibility? Parang ganun lang siya. And your responsibility will, responsibility will be on the right uh, column, di ba? So if you have the right to play and right to recreation, ano siya dapat? So ano ba dapat? What is your responsibility Anong katapat na responsibility for you to play and for recreation? So, may, meron bang makakasagot? Sorry, kasi matching type siya. So, I would say, di ba, if meron kang karapat ng makapaglaro at makapaglibang, siguro you also have to finish your homework probably before ka makapaglaro. So, parang siguro ganito siya. So, supposedly ganito ang activity, but I'm not sure if you'll be able to annotate. Ayan. If you may karapatan kang maging malakas, malakas at malusog, of course, kailangan mo siguro kumain ng masustansyang pagkain, di ba? If, para mapanitiling malusog ang inyong katawan. So, ganyan siya. I hope meron kayong annotate function, but if not, just bear in mind, just keep in mind that for every rights, you have your responsibilities then. And that's very important for you to note. Kasi hindi pwedeng Um, ina-assert lang natin ang ating karapatan without recognizing our responsibilities. Ayan. So, tatapusin ko ba ito? Subukan kong tapusin. Mabilisan lamang. Karapatan makapag-aral. You have the responsibility, of course, na pumasok sa paaralan at mag-aral ng mabuti. While recognizing, of course, that there are children who are not able to go to school. But if you have that opportunity, of course, you have, you have to exert effort then na makapasok. Um, you have the right na magkaroon ng mapag-arugang pamilya. So, anong gagawin natin? Siyempre, we also have to listen at sumunod, e boy, obey our parents. Kung meron tayong karapatan na mabigyan ng proteksyon laban sa pagsamantala ng panganib, um, ano ba dapat? Siguro, I, pwede tayong makinig din. I think this one nga is pwede din dito. And then this one is also this one. Makinig din tayo sa ating mga pamilya. If you have the right to express your opinion, di ba? Kung ikaw ay pwedeng mag-express ng opinion, you have to be respectful and listen to other people's concern. Di ba? Kung gusto mong maging ligtas sa kalamidad, um, kailangan ka rin makinig sa iyong pamilya. And then if you want information, kailangan ka rin matutong gumamit ng maayos na internet. Sorry, magulo yung aking matching type. Medyo hirap ako magalaw. But basically, that's the activity. And the point is, you should be uh, mindful of your responsibilities as children. So, yun. Um, I think um, I'm through with the, present, the first part of the presentation. I will just um, go into a quick break. Mag-change lang ako ng slides. And maybe we'll also have a short, short, very short break lang. My next slide will be shorter naman. Ay, actually, shorter. Puro kwento na lang siya. But we will just be focusing on the rights of children um, affected during the COVID-19 pandemic. So maybe um, a few minutes lang, probably maximum of five minutes. Can we have that? Kiki, siya, andyan pa ba? Okay, so maybe we can come back at 2.30 to be exact. Ayan.
Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Attorney Jill. Uh, I would like to remind each participant to please register dun sa uh, QR code or dun sa link na ipopost po ni Ma'am Krisha dun sa chat box. This is for proper documentations and and for certificate certificate purposes only. Thank you so much. The sound is so low for Hello. Sir Leo? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, can we proceed na po? It's already 2.30. Yeah, yeah, okay po. Thank you. So, ayan. Thank you, attorney. Sure. Ayan. Um, I hope everyone's back na. Um, again, before we begin, sige, magkapa-thumbs up muna ako just to make sure na may kasama ako habang ako ay nagsasalita. Ayan. Okay, I'll just 
nakabalik na ba tayong lahat? Thank you. Ayan. I think others are still having their break, but just to siguro para hindi tayo mag-extend. Um, allow me to continue. I'll just share my slides. And ito namang discussion natin ay more on the situation of children and how the COVID pandemic affected um, children's rights. Um, ito, sineshare ko lang siya. Ayan. Ay, ayan. So, ito na yung session 2. Uh, same slide which we used then in our presentation. Bata-bata, kamusta ka na? Specifically, how are children during um, the COVID-19 pandemic? Of course, I'm sure we are all aware kung ano yung COVID-19 pandemic. So, yung cor coronavirus disease in 2019. Ayan. Okay. So, sorry, nag nag echo ba ako? Hello? Ay, hindi. Hello? Ayan. Nawala na. Ah, oh, go ahead lang. Okay lang ba? Yes po. Okay, sige. Medyo, sure. Ayan. So, um, we are all aware of the coronavirus. Kaya siya COVID pandemic kasi coronavirus form siya ng isang virus na nagkakaroon ng respiratory um, effect sa, sa ating respiratory system. Mother kasi bago siya, bagong strain, di ba? And 19 kasi natagpuan siya ng 2019. Contrary na iniisip natin 2020 siya, 2019 pala meron na tayo nito. And here are some of the symptoms ng COVID-19 na nakikita natin at nababasa natin, di ba? So, question now is, ano nga bang naging effect ng COVID-19 pandemic, ha? not na COVID-19? Kung di ko, ano nga ba yung nag-create kasi ng pandemic tong COVID-19? And when you say pandemic, nagkaroon ng ano, um, uh, marami ang nagkaroon ng sakit na ito. Um, when you say pandemic, kasi either within the country or globally. But in the case of COVID pandemic, naging Globally, marami talaga ang naapektuhan ng sakit na ito. That's why nagkaroon ng mga lockdowns, nagkaroon ng curfews, at ng iba't ibang, um, nagkaroon ng iba't ibang policy, health protocols para dito. Um, I was informed na hindi nakikita ang aking slide. Hindi pa rin ba siya nakikita? Or kita na ba siya? Ay, hindi nakikita yung slide ko. Visible. Kisha, kita ba siya? Or wala? I can... Visible. Okay na po. Ah, okay na. Thank Kisha you. Na okay, sige. Proceed ka lang. So, ano nga bang effect ng COVID pandemic sa mga bata? Very quickly, some of the children, of course, um, nasa bahay na sila. Most of the time, they are left at home. They're not allowed to go to school. They are not allowed to play outside. So, basically, yung buhay nila nasa loob na lang ng bahay because of the health uh, because of the travel restrictions or oh, movement and travel restrictions of course you all know that classes then uh, online na lang siya for a while it was suspended but later on naging online naman siya and then some of these children of course they feel na yung fear may nararamdaman silang fear may nararamdaman silang worry about the health uh, about the health of the family members and some of them were actually separated from their families because of the community quarantine um, not to mention, and I'm sure a lot of you are aware, may mga bata din, although not very, um, hindi naman marami, no? But some children were also affected by COVID-19. Although, pag nakita natin yung data, konting bata lang naman compared sa mga adults ang naapektohan ng COVID-19. And one of the uh, effects of COVID-19 among children is yung kanilang mental health. Ay, I'm glad na you are already um, well, Siva. I'm, I'm, I'm glad na well ka na. And thank you for joining us then. Uh, of course, some of some children, dahil nga nabago yung kanilang environment, um, marami, di nila nakita yung kanilang family or kanilang classmate, it also affected their mental health. That's why marami tayo ngayong mga hotline for children or even adults who are experiencing, for example, concern, mental health concerns. And Ayan, um, nilagay ko rin sa ating presentation yung numbers if you would like to, for example, um, if you need professionals or if your parents or if you have friends and family members who might need professionals who could help them and who might be suffering from mental health concerns. Ayan. Um, aside from this, of course, ano nga ba ang naging epekto ng COVID-19 sa family natin, sa kabuhayan, economic condition 
ng ating pamilya. Di ba napag-aralin natin kanina, we have the right to our basic needs. And when you say basic, basic needs, that would include food, shelter, clothing, di ba, that we need para ma-develop tayo. Uh, unfortunately, madalas nyo itong nakikita, lockdown is not the same for everyone. Well, some people might be enjoying the fact that they are staying home with their families. Other family, nahihirapan sila because it would mean loss, um, loss of um, source of income. Yung iba, nawala ng trabaho ang parents nila. And it became more difficult for them para na-provide yung needs nila. For some, the families might be enjoying their time together. But for other families, um, halos wala silang makain. Um, buti na lang, merong, merong rasyon diba, na nare-receive, especially nung time ng lockdown. So, iba-iba ang naging epekto ng COVID-19 for the families. And a lot of um, parents, a lot of people have lost their jobs. Or even kahit ngayon malalaking businesses, they closed down because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And this has caused stress to the family, um, sa mga parents natin, some of them, especially those who have lost their jobs. And those who are not able to provide na for the needs of their family. Also, sabi nga, what is the effect of COVID-19 sa education ng mga bata? As we have discussed earlier, you children have the right to access education, di ba? But because of the COVID-19, at least yung early part ng COVID-19, remember March kasi nagkaroon ng lockdown. So a few months after, there were estimated na 1.5 children Um, around the world have been affected because nagkaroon ng closure sa lahat ng paaralan, not only here in the country. But here in the Philippines, nagkaroon ng at least 27 million students who have been affected by COVID-19 dahil nga nawala ng pasok. Um, later on, nagkaroon na of course ng different learning modalities uh, uh, sa iba't ibang school. Nagkaroon din ng iba't ibang community quarantine classification. Um, sa atin, here at the NCR before, naka-ECQ tayo, di ba? Um, kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng online learning distance, uh, online distance learning. Usually, ito yung online or yung iba naman modules ang ginagamit. But for those na hindi na naka-ECQ or yung nasa left side, ito yung naka-blue, um, very limited, supposedly inaalaw ang face-to-face, but I'm not, I'm not aware kung inaalaw na ito ngayon. And there are blended learnings. Um, of course, pwedeng combination of online, modular, and face-to-face. But again, I think yung face-to-face, hindi pa rin siya inaalaw up until now. Kasi nga, the instruction is there should be vaccine first before we expose the children sa labas. Ayan. And then, na-mention ko rin to kanina, how about the children with disabilities? How about them? Are they able to access education then? Of course, mas... Um, Mas difficult for them because they need assistive devices to help them um, cope with the online learning, di ba? And some of them then, iba-iba ang kanilang needs at iba-iba ang kanilang disability. So, kailangan yung platform would be able to help them access um, this um, education. But syempre, there are need, uh, there are things that needs to be improved na hindi pa available as of the as of the moment. So some of the children, uh, especially those with the disabilities, hindi pa talaga nila na enjoy fully ang kanilang right to education. Also, of course, um, they also need Filipino sign language interpreters para maintindihan nila yung dinidiscuss. Um, whether it's on TV or kahit sa computer, kailangan ng narration or interpretation. And then, When they do online then, they also experience yung tinatawag na cyberbullying. And this can also be difficult for them. Kasi syempre, di ba, um, nahihirapan na nga silang mag-cope up with their studies. And some of them are also experiencing cyberbullying, especially when they do online classes. Uh, but there is assurance naman from the government that they will do their best to um, access, to make sure that children with disabilities are, access, are able to access education. In fact, marami rin nakapag-enroll sa kanila noong June of last year. And some of them uh, were able to register. And I think they were also attending na din yung online classes. And then, ito malaking issue to sa ating mga kabataan. Sa inyo pala, sabi dito, bakit hindi na kami pwedeng lumabas ng bahay para makita ang mga kaibigan at mga kalaro? Sabi ko kanina, you have the right to play. And leisure, di ba? Very important na na-experience yung makapaglaro, maglibang at makapagpahinga. Pero alam natin yan, di ba? Sabi niya ni Kim Chu, bawal lumabas. And a lot of you were not able, di ba, 
to to get off your your, um, your houses last year pa baka yung iba sa inyon hindi pa na experience lumabas since then kasi hanggang ngayon hindi pa rin siya allowed in fact bawal talaga lumabas ang mga minors sa ngayon minors again below 18 and uh, there are different protocols sa iba't ibang country ay sa iba't ibang lugar natin Diba sabi nga dito, may mga iba't ibang restriction depende kung ikaw ay enhanced community quarantine, modified, or general. So it would depend kung saan kayo nakatira at ano na ngayon ang protocol sa inyo. But here sa, sa NCR, um, sa pagkakaalam ko, bawal pa rin lumabas ang mga minors. But just to say that there are exemptions. And of course, the government, again, as part of their commitment, diba, para masiguraduhin na enjoy nyo inyong karapatan, there are exceptional cases where you can go out dahil even during quarantine. Ano-ano tong mga to? Number one, if you need treatment, especially for those children na merong HIV who needs treatment, they can go out para maka, makakuha ng treatment. If you are experiencing abuse or exploitation or, or um, um, violence within, your, within the homes, you can go out to report. If you need... Um, we have, of course, you are aware that all, there are also children na, um, who are who got pregnant or who are maybe in need of prenatal care or may mga anak na kailangan alagaan ng kanilang mga anak, pwede rin silang lumabas. And for children with disabilities, they can also go out para din kumingi ng um, tulong or kung kailangan nila ng um, medical assistance or assistance, pwede silang lumabas. Those are the exemption. And kapag lumabas itong mga batang ito, the requirement or the directive is for the government or the local government or the barangay to assist and help them. So remember this exemption. Um, pag lumabas ka, ano mangyayari sa iyo? Of course, alam natin na may care for you. Uh, marami kayo naririnig na some children, they are uh, being caught and sabi nila, sabi nila nakukulong. Ang tanong, maaari po ba akong ikulong? Diba? Yan yung mga questions na madalas namin nare-receive the Commission on Human Rights. So sabi dito, if you um, violate a curfew ordinance, pag ikaw ay naabutan sa labas at lumalabag sa curfew, hindi ka pwedeng arestohin o ikulong. What the barangay should do is bigyan ka ng payo or itinatawag nila intervention, pagsabihan ka na bawal lumabas at ibalik ka sa inyong mga magulang. Diba? You are not also, um, they should not also hurt you physically or emotionally or hindi ka rin nila pwede ipahiya or ilagay sa situation kung saan makakaranas ka ng anumang uri ng karahasan. So remember, hindi kayo pwedeng makulong if you are caught violating curfew. Pero wag nyo namang ulit-ulitin kasi um, ibang usapan na yung pag inuulit-ulit nyo, diba? Baka iba nang ikasa sa inyo. But definitely if it's just curfew at may, at uh, lumabas ka lang for some reasons, hindi ka pwedeng basta ikulong. So, meron din of course, during the pandemic, yung mga batang nakakulong na. So, may mga karapatan ba silang mga bata? Itong mga batang nakakulong. And then, kami sa CHR, may mga bata kami kliyente, yung mga tinatawag nating children in conflict with the law. Dito sila, um, dapat wala sila sa regular jails. Dapat nasa bahay pag-asa sila. These are the facilities where children in conflict with the law or yung mga children na nakalagay, nakalabag ng batas, dito sila dapat ginagala. It's more of a residential facility, hindi siya regular jail. So maraming bata actually ang na-monitor ng CHR na nasa bahay pag-asa last year as of May 20. We have more than a thousand children who are in bahay pag-asa. And uh, we have 75 bahay pag-asa all around the country. And if you note, karamihan sa mga ito, mga lalaki, no? And very few are girls, ayan. So 11 girls lang ang nakita natin doon. And we were also able to talk to them. Sabi nila, and these are some of, um, the, ito yung kanilang mga senior sa amin. Some of them are worried kasi hindi na nila nakita yung family nila, hindi nila alam yung situation ng family nila. And then yung iba nag-worry din dahil tumatagal yung kaso nila. So it has also become difficult for them kasi hindi na rin sila pwedeng madalaw ng kanilang parents while inside the bahay pag asa facility. Ayan. And then, I think this one is very important. Paano ba kayo mapagtatanggol ng pamahalaan during COVID-19? As I've mentioned, you have the right to be protected. And one of the um, rampant, what I say rampant na mga cases which we have monitored in the commission um, during um, yung ECQ last year is more on children's ano to, crimes committed against children. 
and women. And specifically, ang na-monitor namin is yung online child exploitation na only because marami ka yung bat maraming bata ngayon ang nasa internet, ang online. So there has been a lot of um, cases of child online sexual abuse and exploitation na na-monitor namin, reported to us. Sabi dito, ano ba ang online sexual exploitation of children? Ito yung pananamantalang sexual sa mga bata, kabataan sa pamamagitan ng online or internet. Karaniwan nito nakikipag-usap sa inyo yung mga hindi nyo kilala or bumibili ng mga larawan o vision ng mga bata or live stream. So you have to be very careful na wala kayong kakausapin mga stranger online. Uh, these things, these are some of the reports that we have received from children. Some will just be um, sending messages to them, manghingi na ng kung ano-anong mga pictures and video. And you have to make sure na hindi kayo, na, hindi nyo to ina-entertain. And if ever meron kayong matagpo ang ganito, make sure to report them. Ayan, uh, by reporting them and by reporting children who have been um, victimized by uh, these perpetrators, pwede silang ma-rescue. And the Philippine National Police, together with the NBI and DOJ and some organization, have, uh, parang they have been uh, they have done a lot last year para ma-rescue ang mga batang ito. So by by people who are able who are reporting these cases, nakakapag-rescue tayo ng mga kabataan. Ayan. So before I end, very important to make sure that um you practice um safe uh, online safety. You also have to know your rights bilang bata online. So make sure that naka-private mode kayo in your social media accounts. Huwag magbigay ng mga sensitive information. And then as much as possible, we do not post um, explicit contents or anything na alam natin may be used against us or magamit uh, uh, against sa atin. And then make sure na maging matili at maingat kung, kaninong, kung sino ang kakausapin at kung sino ang ia-add sa Facebook, di ba? Um, wag lang tayo basta makikipagkilala, uh, makikipag-chat kung kanino-kanino online. And then, itigal dyan yung pakikipag-usap online sa mga taong we are not comfortable with. Um, if you feel na merong taong kumakausap sa inyo and you are no longer comfortable, make sure to tell your parents or your or, or older siblings or yung inyong mga guardians. And then, Hindi, hindi yung magagawa to kasi hindi kayo allowed kumabas, but make sure then avoid muna natin makipag-ibos. Dahil for those na hindi nyo naman kilala. And careful din tayo on the things that we share or we like sa ating internet, di ba? If this involves, if this um, involves sexual content sa mga bata, wag natin basta isi-share. Diba? Kasi baka tayo um, ma-involve din. So make sure lang that um, alam din natin na we are careful din with what we click and share to our online friends. Ayan. And then, of course, you also have to tell your friends kung paano ang tamang paggamit ng internet. And lastly, kapag may nagtangkangkunan ka ng pictures or video ng anumang gadget, tumanggi, tumakbo, at magsumbong. Do not allow them to do that, diba? It's your body. You can always say no. Ayan. Again, just to remind you that you can report. Ayan, you can report. Kahit sino ba kanina ba kayo pwede mag-report? Pwede kayo mag-report ng pang-aabuso or pag may nakita kayong anumang, um, kung may nakita kayong bata ina inaare. So there's a curfew, mga batang nasa lakaransangan. Kanino kayo pwede mag-report? Nakalagay dyan sa barangay, Barangay Council for the Protection of Children. Pwede rin kayo sa DSWD, sa Philippine National Police, even sa CHR. Pwede kayong mag-report. Um, if you feel na there are health concerns that you also need to report, meron din po tayong mga barangay health emergency response team na pwede rin kayong mag-report. So if you feel na hindi napapansin or may mga batang napapabayaan or may mga batang sinasaktan or sinasamantala or mga batang nag-suffer ng mental and emotional stress or health, you can always report. And these are the numbers, hotlines which you can share and wherein you can report. So you have CWC-163, Philippine Red Cross, available then. Ang PNP, we also have their number. We also have our hotline in CHR. And sa CHR, you can also do it via online through our Gender Ombuds Reporting Portal. Pwede rin kayong mag-report dito. And I hope you will be all, will be able to use these portals and reporting um, online portals and hotline para makapag-report. Yan ang isa sa mga responsibility niyo bilang bata um, na makapag-report kasi we, we will not be able to help you 
if hindi natin alam yung nangyayari sa inyo. If you feel na you do not want to be known or you feel na natatakot kayo mag-report dahil uh, baka makilala kayo, there are ways for you to report na hindi naman natin kailangang um, i-disclose ang identity nyo or nung makamag-anak ninyo. Ayun. So, I encourage everyone to report if kaya ninyo or at least to tell your parents about whatever is happening sa sarili niya which you think which you are now longer comfortable. Ayun. So, that's the end of my presentation. Ayan, sabi dito, I don't talk to people I don't know, even even if it's my mom's friend, which is tama. If you don't know the person, if you're not close to him or her, wag muna, wag muna tayo makapag-usap, especially if online. Ayan, so that's the end of my presentation. Sorry, medyo ni-rush ko na siya kasi we're running out of time. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them before tayo, of course, mag-end. Thank you again sa, for your time and sa pakikinig. Maraming salamat. Ayun. So, I turn over the um sino ba? Kanya ko ba to turn over yan? I swear. Okay. Uh, Thank you Attorney Jill. Sure. Thank you so much uh, for the inspiring talk you've shared with us for today. Uh, certainly or definitely our Latronites learned a lot about your sharing. Uh, moving forward, let us proceed with the the question and answer session or the open forum. Uh I would like to encourage everyone to, to ask uh, questions. However, we will limit only three questions. We can only accommodate three questions. So those questions that will not be accommodated, you can send your uh, your questions through my through the email of the CED at letran.edu.ph or you can you can send us a message to that uh, email so that we can channel your questions. Now the floor is open for for some questions, clarifications, or inputs. Yes, or if there are reactions to the presentation, anything yes. na gumugulo sa kanila na they want to process, yan. Anyone is free to speak and share. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Ayan. Questions? May question po ang mga participants? Or may mga clarifications po? Now is the right time to ask question. Ayan. Mohang very clear po yung sharing, uh, Attorney Jill. Sir, if um, baka nahiya sila magtanong, sir, yes, yan, as you mentioned, you can also send, um, you can forward the questions naman to our emails. Um, we have our email naman then with, uh, with the repo and type po sa amin sa CHRCRC Not for that. any clarification. And uh, if you want a copy of the presentation, we could also provide them to you po para meron din kayong guidance. Okay. Ayan, meron po ati, I think one question. One question. What if people doesn't listen to child rights? Parang yun ang tanong niya, no? Ayan, from Siva. Ayan. Um, yun, siguro, um, of course, you cannot expect everyone to listen sa inyong karapatang bilang mga bata. Sabi ko nga kanina, some, um, some people would actually think that children kasi, di ba, parang uh, they don't know better. Pero um, as you have learned, this afternoon, you have the right to participate, and you have the right to 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 this um to share the discussion, especially on matters which affect you as a person. Pero you cannot always insist on what you want. You cannot always insist on what you think is right. Kaya nga ang sinasabi natin, you always have the voice. You can share what you think is right for you. But at the end of the day, the choices will always belong to, of course, those who are to the duty bearers, the government, your parents, probably your elder siblings. And if you think na by doing so, na violate na yung rights mo, that's the time that, yun nga, ini-encourage ko sa'yo. If you feel that your rights uh, have been violated because um, the people around you are not listening to your rights or to what you are trying to say, then maybe that's the time that you can report or that you can seek help from your parents or from other people around you. So, yun. Okay, thank you, attorney. Thank you. More questions for from the participants? OK, 
Okay, baka nahihiya lang po yung ibang ano or yes, they, they, they believe that the based on the discussion discuss, discussions are very very clear naman po. Um uh, if ever if you have in mind na uh, you, uh, you, you cannot uh, uh, ask questions for this time no you can send your questions uh, through the email of the, the office no uh, ced@letran.edu.ph and then we will facilitate your your questions we can ask help assistance from the chr to clarify and to answer your questions yes thank you sir thank you okay so kung wala na pong question kung wala na pong questions from this point uh before the the next part no i i would like to uh, inform everyone to please uh, accomplish the the evaluation of the post uh, test and the evaluation for this activity uh, the post evaluation is very important uh, for us to know your your, the, the, your learnings about this particular webinar and of course the evaluation so that we could uh, we, we will know what are the opportunities uh, what are the strengths and uh, opportunities for improvements that we uh, we would like to consider in the future yeah with that, uh, the, the evaluation and the post test will be posted uh, by Mam Krisha of CHR. Uh, it will be posted. On, you, you can you can scan the the QR code or you can uh, the, the, the the link will be posted on the chat box. Ayan. So post test you can scan or you can the, the, the link is already posted on the chat box. Once again, I would like to uh, in remind everyone to uh, to accomplish the post test. Uh, you can you can scan uh, the or you can click the link for the for the post test and likewise for the evaluation. Okay, uh, from this point, uh, let's proceed to the uh, awarding of certificate. Uh, allow me to share my my. Uh, screen. Okay, um, the Colegio de San Juan de Letran Manila, uh, Intramuros Manila, presents this uh, certificate of appreciation to Attorney Julie Ann uh, B. Regalado for sharing her valuable knowledge as resource speaker uh, in the webinar entitled Child Rights in COVID-19 Pandemic to Basic Education and Junior High School Students of Letran College Manila on February 16, 2021. Signed by Assistant Professor Leo N. Bernadas, uh, MBA, the Director of the Community Extension Department of the Colegio, and uh, Reverend Father Romel P. Olivar O.P., the Vice President uh, for Religious Affairs Divisions. Once again, maraming salamat po, Attorney Jill Regalado, for, for sharing your, your knowledge about the specific topic. Maraming salamat rin po sa lateral, and congratulations, sir, for this activity po. Maraming salamat. Okay, to to formally close this uh webinar may i request everyone to uh, join us in the closing uh, prayer uh, in the name of the father the son the holy spirit amen may god the father bless us may may god uh, 
May God the Son heal us. May God the Holy Spirit enlighten us and give us eyes to see with, ears to hear with, hands to do the work of God with, to fit, uh, fit to walk with, a mouth to preach the word of salvation with, and the angel of peace to watch over us and lead us at last. By our Lord's gift to the kingdom, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, uh, amen. On behalf of the organizers, the, the Community Extension Department, uh, the CHR to our resource speaker, uh, we thank you for joining us today and we hope you have learned and enjoyed this webinar. To let your nights, let us continue to live according to the ideals of Deus, Patria, Letran. Sempre arriba, sempre Letran. Ang naging sandigan 